I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thy all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washes white as snow. chapel so blessed to be able to be with our church family again on this beautiful sunday morning and good morning to those of our church family on facebook live our announcements for this morning we're bringing to your attention our passion week so it's going to begin with palm sunday which is next week and then we'll have a resurrection psalm with sam on wednesday night and then on friday night our good friday service here in the sanctuary and it's always a very solemn celebration and recognition with family and music. And, and Pastor Greg will be giving us the Palm Sunday mess around the Good Friday message on that evening. And it's usually quick, so you know, have your children in here with us. And, and then on Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, we will have our sunrise service here in the sanctuary at 6:30 a.m and then our regular um, Sunday uh, service at nine, two different messages. So each teaching builds upon one upon the other. So you're really gonna wanna be able to get the full perspective of our, our resurrection um, recognition this year. That being said, we also have our, oh, we have a really wonderful grief share ministry and they are hosting a picnic day for the whole church Bring your family, your friends, and whatnot. It's going to be at the beach, weather permitting. There's all kinds of wonderful information and a sign-up sheet out there. So please visit that sign-up table out there as well as prayer partners. Our third thing that we have going on is Jesus and Friends. We're having a women's, our Mother's Day celebration for our women, daughters, in-laws, everyone. So bring your family and friends for that information for that is out there as well this friday we are having our agape way ministry you can see brother danny about that it's in the kitchen they're in the book of acts chapter 20 i believe so a wonderful time of fellowship and and things of the like so like us on facebook follow us on instagram and please hit that share button most gracious heavenly father we thank you lord for the privilege the opportunity 
and the freedom to worship you freely in spirit and in truth. Receive these tithes offerings from the bottom of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, thank you for your precious name, which is above all. Lord, we don't deserve your kindness and your grace and your mercies, but Lord, thank you that you love us that much, that your mercies are new every morning and that you take care of us and keep us, and we thank you. And as we come into your, your time of, of hearing your word, anoint Pastor Greg and anoint our ears, and thank you again, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. on Connie thank you very much praise the Lord what a great week as we roll into as Connie mentioned passion week uh, we're just enjoying ourselves and we want to be that have that ability to demonstrate God's love the resurrected living Lord that we serve amen he lives he's alive and so what a blessing and we rejoice in that regard shall we hold him high though this morning I believe this is the perfected Word of God. I believe that in the volume of this book speaks about my Lord and my Savior. I desire not only to read it, to know it, but through the power of God's Holy Spirit to live it. Amen? It's all about the power of God's Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Join me, would you? Matthew chapter 5. We'll pick up at verse 13 this morning. Matthew 5, verse 13. Lord, we ask you to bless your word. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. And we'll go through verse, verses 13 through 20. And this morning we're going to see three things that are really going to be paramount there'll be other things of course that the Lord speaks to you personally but what we're going to highlight this morning are three things number one you and I as believers born again believers you and I we are salt secondly you and I as born again believers are light and thirdly, this morning, we're going to realize and recognize and, and just reiterate what we already know, that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of God's law. The fulfillment. That means it's filled to the top. <laughs> Nothing else. So salt, light, and Jesus as the fulfillment of of God's law and we'll look at each and every one of these things this morning so as Jesus has been addressing the crowds as we've seen and got up on top of a mountain and so his voice would be projected and amplified if you will I mean these days you know we have microphones and speaker cabinets and everything else but we have to remember that in Jesus' day, of course, everything was just the voice. But again, Jesus knew as he got up on the mount a little bit that his voice would project. And so he's want, Jesus is wanting and is doing a great job, of course, addressing the multitudes. I mean, people are following this rabbi Jesus, you know, the, the Jesus, the, the carpenter's son. And they're just encapsulated with what he has to say. But we remember that many, as we've seen over the last couple of times, many people were there because kind of of the benefits, if you will. But we always remember that Jesus taught as a priority, and then he preached, as we've been seeing, and then following those two things then the healings then the miracles so Jesus's priority is always teaching and then preaching in other words saying hey 
Repent because the kingdom of heaven is drawing close. So he explained the scriptures and then he would give an invitation and then everything else would follow. And so we like to follow that pattern here likewise here at Calvary Chapel. We place a priority on Bible teaching. And then as the Lord moves, we give an invitation accordingly. Because we don't want anybody to walk out and say, gee, I wonder how I can be a part of that, but I don't really know how. And so we want to give an opportunity. That's, that's our attitude here. Is our friends on Facebook and things, we want to give them that opportunity to say, gee, I want to close the loop here. I want to be part of this activity. And so we oftentimes give that invitation. But our priority is teaching, in other words, explaining what the Scripture says. Not inventing things and, and trying to pull something out of Scripture. We just explain the Scripture. What, what does the Scripture say? Well, this is what it says. And now what does God want to do with you in this Scripture? I don't know. That's between you and the Lord. But we break it down, and we get to have a chance to look at it together. What a blessing. And so as Jesus continues on here in verse 13, Jesus addressing the crowd, and remember his disciples are in front, and the, major and, and the multitudes are behind the disciples. But Jesus goes on to say, you are the salt of the earth. Now, in ancient times, salt was used as a preservative. And a, and a lot of times, we still, in certain aspects, use salt as a preservative. But majority of time, for us today in modern days, we use salt as a seasoner, a seasoning. But so in ancient times, though, it, both things are realistic. Salt as a preservative. And so Jesus here is saying, as we saw, you, sh sh you are the salt of the earth. Christians are to preserve the gospel message. That's our job. Makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, why would the non-believing world preserve the gospel? Doesn't make any sense, right? So our function as born-again believers, as Christians... We are to preserve the gospel message. And secondly, you and I as born-again believers are to preserve the Christian biblical lifestyle. We're to preserve it and demonstrate a Christian biblical lifestyle. That's our job. That's our job. So if you're ever wondering, gee, I don't know what God wants me to do. Hey, it's simply preserve the gospel message and live a biblical lifestyle. That's our function. Other things will follow, I'm sure, but we've got to keep those two things in reality. Preserve the gospel and preserve, preserve biblical lifestyle. That's our function. So what is the gospel? Well, in a sense, I mean, the easiest way to explain it, the gospel is simply the good news. Well, What's the good news? And again, a lot of this is just refresher for us, but it, it's important to be reminded and stir these things up in our hearts. We know these things, but we need to review. So what is the good news? Well, simply, John 3.16, we all recognize very easily. John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whoever believes in Jesus shall not perish but have everlasting life. And so God so loved, because God loved, he demonstrated his love by giving. See, we, we get the Hollywood version of love. Oh, I love you. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah, before you know it, scene three, the couple's in the sack, right? I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, wow. I mean, that's what's being pumped into our homes each and every day. And you know what? Beside us, you know who else is watching this? Our little bitty ones. Yeah. Yeah. Our children, our grandchildren. It's just amazing. And so the fight's on, the battle's on, ladies and gentlemen. Moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas. 
uncles, aunts, whatever, they, whatever defines your family unit. The battle is on. You have a commission. You need to continue doing what you're doing and preserve the gospel and demonstrate a biblical lifestyle. That's your job. To these little ones. To those around you. God loved and he demonstrated his love by giving. See, God began the relationship. We just have to receive it. And that's what people have so much trouble with, receiving. Oh, my. But God demonstrated his love by sending his son. Jesus Christ said, yes, I will do that. I will demonstrate my love as I will let my creation, my creation, can you imagine that? My creation pin me to the cross. And we're coming into that Passion Week. It's just an amazing thing. I mean, I look at myself in the mirror and I reflect on some of the things that, the activities that I was engaged in 30 years ago, and I just shake my head, Lord, why would you even spend two seconds with me? Why? And he simply says, oh, because I love you. You know, that just breaks my heart. So God loved and he demonstrated his love by giving. Giving. All have fallen short, the Bible tells us. All of us. But yet God has demonstrated his love that he gave. And all we have to do, as we know, all we have to do, is confess and submit to the finished work of Jesus Christ. See, I'm just reminding us of these things so you can steal what I've said and use it out there at the skate park. Use it as we're handing out food to those that are in need. Use it when you're down there at Stater Brothers in the checkout line. Use these things. The things that come out of this pulpit are great plagiarable materials. Use them. Pastor Chuck said, hey, if it touches your heart, it's yours. It's yours. Take it. I don't own it. God gave it to me. I'm giving it to you, so use it. We're grateful. So job number one. We are to preserve the gospel through belief. When we believe something, it comes out of our mouth. We don't have to hunt for opportunities. We just start talking and our nature comes out. Hey, I believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You know, it just comes out and such. And so that's our number one job is to preserve the gospel through belief. Secondly, we preserve the gospel through action. That is demonstrating a biblical lifestyle. That's what we do as born-again believers. Well, how do we live a biblical lifestyle? How do we do that? Well, again, Jesus is going to explain this to us in a, a few weeks as the Lord tarries. But in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, and you're very familiar with this verse, whether you know it or not. The way we demonstrate a biblical lifestyle is we seek first the kingdom of God. We seek the kingdom of God first. That means in everything we do, we, say, we ask, Lord, what would you like to do in this circumstance? What would, Lord, what would you like to do? And then just sit back and you know, go about your business. But Lord, what would you like to do? So that's how we demonstrate a biblical lifestyle. You know, especially when I'm working on a, uh, one of the kids' vehicles, and, and you know, right now it's Margo, but when I was with, when Bo was at the house and things, we're working on his truck, and, and now Margo working on her truck. You know, and something, something's wrong, we need to identify the problem and repair it. So I would always start with the kids and say, hey, let's ask the Lord to highlight what the trouble is here. And the kids are kind of like, oh, it's a good idea. Sure enough. Well, Lord, would you, would you mind? Would you mind highlighting the issue and then give us the ability to fix it? 
Amen. That's it. Not even four seconds, right? And then sure enough, ten minutes later, it's like, look at there. Broken wire. All right. Let's get this electrical system back up and running. So, it's, so that's, that's demonstrating a biblical lifestyle. Lord, what would you like to do? Lord, I got a meeting coming up, and then, you know, my week is filled with meetings. But Lord, hey, Lord, what would you like to do in this meeting as we're communicating about and trying to exchange thoughts and, and get direction? Lord, but I say, Lord, what would you like to do in that upcoming meeting on Wednesday? Here it is, Sunday night. But Lord, what do you want to do in that meeting? I mean, I've got my notes. I've got some ideas. But what is it that you'd like to do? And I just wait. And I wait till that Wednesday meeting rolls around. I go, whoa, look at there. Way to go. So we're, we're demonstrating as we seek first the kingdom of God, then all these things shall be added to you and I. How do we seek the kingdom of God? Well, simply by spending time. And that's hard for us to do, isn't it? This walk of faith is hard to do when we're alone. I mean, you know, we can write checks, and we do. And we can come, and we can build, and we can clean, and we can do things, and we can show up. But to spend quiet time, oh, man, our brains are just going crazy. And, there, and, and so we, we end up beginning to pray, okay, Lord, I'm going to dedicate this time. And we do, and we do good for three or four minutes, and all of a sudden a thought comes in our head, right? Oh, it's a good thought. It's something, you know, that needs to be done, needs to be taken care of, and all of a sudden we're off on a rabbit trail. Oh, you know, i got to open up the church tomorrow. Well, you know, what time do I need to get there? Well, who's going to be there? Oh, yeah, it's going to be great. And all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute. You know, my Heavenly Father's saying, you know, I'll wait for you. And I come back and I think, man, Lord, I'm so sorry. That's just the way our brains work. We have to discipline ourselves. But we've got to spend time. We have to spend time. And this fast world and phones are ringing and beepers are going off and buzzers are buzzing. It all it distracts our time. But we've got to slow down and spend time. Spending time with the Lord and communicating. And in that communication process, wait for it. We need to listen. Oh, shoot me now. How long do I have to wait? <laughs> That's what we want to know. You know, when I open up a book, I see how long where I can take the break because I'm just so undisciplined. You know, when I open up my devotional, I, I actually look and see, oh, okay, 41 verses. Okay, so I've got to prepare myself. I'm like a little kid, you know. Okay, I've got to get through this. I mean, that's, but this is, this is training. We've got to spend time. We've got to, and in spending time, we communicate. And in communication, listening is at least half the issue. And I would have to recommend when you're communicating with the Lord, make 90% of your time listening. But praise the Lord. These are things that we deal with. And then finally, we say, Lord, as I seek first the kingdom of God, I say, Lord, Mold me into what you want. Brainwash me, Lord. I need a good brain washing. Mold me, Lord. So that's how we demonstrate a biblical lifestyle. Very simple. So therefore, as we preserve the gospel through belief and action... We remain salty. We remain salty. We're preserving. We remain salty, but, Jesus goes on to say, if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? So Jesus is saying, this is what you need to do, but, do you hate that? But. If, salt loses, if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? If salt loses its seasoning property, it cannot change anything. Right? If salt loses its saltiness, you wouldn't bother with it, would you? You wouldn't. 
Salt not only preserves, but also awakens. We know that. I mean, as we're frying those eggs, right? And there they are, and we flip them over, and they're just perfect. And we're not finished until we take just a little dash of salt and put a little dash of salt on those eggs. Oh, man, it just brought it home right there, right? Just brought it home. I mean, when I was working construction, I would boil up a dozen eggs Sunday night, and I'd, use, I'd take those eggs onto the construction site with me every morning, you know, have a little something in between uh, and such before the lunch break of the day, what have you. And I had to really, it, it was hard because I had to keep little packages of salt, because who wants to eat a salt-free boiled egg? I mean, I don't. And a couple times when I did forget my little salt packets, uh, man, I had to really kind of grind through that thing. I mean, good protein, you know, but I thought, man, just kind of kind of bland. And so Jesus is speaking to us. We, we can relate to what he's saying. Hey, preserve and bring seasoning. In other words, awaken the subject matter here. But yet if it loses its saltiness, if, it lose, if salt loses its flavoring properties, that salt becomes useless. I mean, why would you, you know, you, you sprinkle a little salt on your egg, but uh, if, if the salt would lose its salty, saltiness, well, you might as well just go out, out outside, get a little sand, and just, you know, kind of drip, drip it in, right? I mean, that, it's the same thing. I mean, you wouldn't do that. And so that's what Jesus, Jesus is catching us right here. He's catching the multitudes right where they're sitting. Oh, yeah. Salt preserves, yeah. And it seasons, yeah. And so Jesus, the master orator, is just bringing it in through example. And when salt becomes useless, seasonless, Jesus goes on, and he says, then it, it, it is good for nothing except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. That's it. Throw it out on the footpath. And maybe there'll be a little traction gained or something. But other than that, salt, Jesus is saying, hey, salt's good for nothing. That's about it. <laughs> That's about it. And so we see that the first thing that Jesus is teaching is, hey, born-again believers are salt. They're preservatives, and they awaken the senses. Secondly, verse 14, hey, you are the light of the world, Jesus is speaking to the multitudes. You're the light of the world. A city, Jesus goes on to explain, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Now certainly it's my belief that Jesus was drawing attention to the beautiful city of Jerusalem. And as you consider joining us in 2023 in our, on our Israel trip, when we get to Israel and we start approaching Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, for the first time, you're going to see Jerusalem perched on top of a hill. And that's why the psalmist always says we're going up to Jerusalem. So it didn't matter if you're coming from the north, the south, the east, or the west, you were always eventually going up to Jerusalem, the city on a hill. And I'm certain that Jesus has Jerusalem in mind God's city, if you will. So a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. And Jesus is saying, hey, you all know where Jerusalem is. Jerusalem cannot hide itself. And so Jesus is using these beautiful examples. So a city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does someone light a lamp and put it under a blanket. You don't do that. And I know that you don't do that by personal experience, right? 
One time as a kid, you know, 13 years old, whatever it was, I woke up and I thought, well, I'll sneak down and raid the refrigerator. And so I turned on a, the lamp. I took the shade off of it first and I turned the lamp on because I had the brilliant idea that I didn't want to wake up my brothers. So I took the shade off and I put a blanket over the lamp. Brilliant, right? Absolutely br ingenious, right? And so I thought, well, I, I won't disturb them, and I'll, I'll get up, you know, I'll be able to sneak around. And so sure enough, by the time, thankfully, the Lord had me scoot back into my bedroom quickly, probably quicker than I had anticipated, but by the time I got up there, that light bulb got hot enough to where it just started burning the blanket. I mean, just started. Nobody knows this story in my family. I've never told this story ever. And my mom regularly listens to the broadcast. Regularly. And so as I go see her next week, she'll be in town uh, two weeks from now, I'm sure she'll be wanting to have a little private discussion with me. But it was, I just, it blows my mind. I mean, literally, by the time I got back to my bed, that, literally, the blanket just started to smoke. And so by experience, you do not put a basket over a lamp. <laughs> it, you don't do it. But you, you, don't, you don't light a light and then cover it. You don't do that. Jesus is saying, now you take that light and you put it on a lampstand. You, you elevate that, that, that light. You put that light on, on an elevated platform so it lights the whole room, right? You don't camouflage that light. You want people to be able to see. You put that light on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. Everyone. We don't care who's in there. We want people to see. And Jesus is saying, don't worry about, just throw this, in. just be a light. Don't worry about who's in the room, just be that light. And God the Holy Spirit is saying, I'll take care of the rest. I just want you to live that biblical lifestyle. And then I'll take care of, of the folks in the room. Don't worry about the results, God the Holy Spirit is saying, that's on me. I'll take care of it. But I want you to participate with me, is what uh, the triune God is saying. I want you to participate. We want you to be a part of this. Moses, stand and watch the salvation of the Lord. And what did Moses witness? He witnessed the Red Sea parting. Hey, Moses, just chill out. Just, just believe and have faith. Watch this. Oh, Moses, you're going to love it. And we've got to come into that frame of mind much more. We need to continue to ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want to do? And I'll be glad to watch. But what do you want to do, Lord? God's best is always quick to come. And as we watch, we can see a lot more Red Sea partings in our lives. And that's exciting, isn't it? I mean, you know what I'm saying. So we're relating to what Jesus is saying. We're saying, yeah, hey, I'm glad to be reminded of these things. Oh, this is not breaking news or anything, but it's just nice to be reminded of these good things. I mean, we're just beat down all week long, right? But we come to the sanctuary and go, ah. Oh. And that's what we're doing this morning once again. So you light a light, you put it on a lampstand, it gives light to everyone. You don't care who, who it gives light to, you just want, it, want people to see, that's all. That's your only motive. Let your light so shine before men. Jesus is now making it personal. He's saying, hey, now I'm going to allow you to apply these things. I've, I've spoken these things, now I want you to consider applying them. So let your personal light so shine before men that they may see your good works. For what purpose? To glorify your Father in heaven. It's not to puff you up. 
or make you walk around and say, hey, I'm Joe Cool. Things like that. That's not what the Lord is saying. He's saying, let your light shine that people can see your good works and glorify God. That's what we do here at Calvary Chapel. That's what we beg the Lord every day and every week. Lord, glorify yourself here at Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. That, that's, that's it. That's all. Lord, we just want you to glorify yourself. Oh, man. Better be ready. It's great. So, employees, be the best employee that you can possibly be. When it's a 15 minute break, once the 15 minutes is expired, man, be at your workstation right there and picking, back right, picking right back up where you left off. Employers honor those whom God has brought to you to assist you in your venture. So, whatever your function is, employer, employee, whatever, be your best. Be your best. I remember, and, and I miss these days, that's why I bring them up on occasion, but as I was coming out of my outlaw mind frame, I mean, I'm a burglar, a, a thief, a liar. And I led people into activities that just were not, not kosher. But yet here I am at Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley, some 25 years ago. And one day, Pastor Jim handed me the keys to the door of the sanctuary. And I was almost hesitant to take these keys. I thought, man, you know, Lord, you're giving me a set of keys to the sanctuary? Man, that got my attention. I'm not, this, it's not playing around anymore. This is huge, a key to the sanctuary. <gasps> I mean, man, I realized playtime's over. I, my yay's got to be a yay, and my nay's got to be a nay, and that's it. And so as I saw that key ring dangling in, his, in Pastor Jim's hand, I just thought, my goodness, that is responsibility. And I said, Lord, are you sure? You know, and I, exactly what happened. He just kind of chuckled. <laughs> yeah, you're my guy. But I had to really, it was a gut check time. Man, this is a big deal. And so eventually, and, and as I had done in, uh, previously, any time I saw something that needed to be done, I just did it. I didn't ask if I should empty a trash can. When I saw a trash can filled, guess what? I emptied it. I didn't ask the eldership or anything. I, I didn't ask if that would be okay. I just did it. And so I, I would love it. And I got to a point to where, as I had my new key, I was now responsible for doing a majority of the janitorial work here. And I loved it. And I miss it, but I loved it. Man, I would come here and I would be so excited. I'd open up the door all by my little self and I'd go, whoa. Man, check it out. They trust me. They believe in me. I mean, these guys, they're crazy. But, but I've got to really make sure I do my best. And so I'd come in, and I'd be cleaning, and I'd be wiping, much like we do today. The guys come in, man, they're sanitizing, and they're, they're cleaning things up, the guys and the gals. It's great. But I was really on a mission. When I would go into the restrooms, I'd say, Lord, I'm cleaning this restroom for your kids. And, Lord, I do not want one fungus alive by the time I leave this, this room. Nothing. <laughs> and it, it was sterilized, and those, those habits have followed us. I mean, they were always there, but they've followed ever since. And I used to have a little trick, and, and I never told the, uh, the head deacon at the time, because he, he would always oversee the restrooms. And so what I'd do is I'd, 
I'd come in early Sunday morning and I'd, I'd get everything cleaned and everything. And then I'd take the uh, spray bottle of Pine Sol. You know, it's got that nice aroma. I mean, to most people, it's nice. Some people will say, gee, that gives me a headache or whatever. But I'd, I'd just put a, a, a really thick batch of Pine Sol in a spray bottle and I'd spray the, kick pa the floorboards. And so that way when you'd open the, the door, it would just waft of pine saw. And it, it was just great. I thought, this is great. And so Chuck, the, the head uh, usher at the time, he would always ask me, he says, you know, I've, I've cleaned these bathrooms for years, and now you're here with me and everything. But man, after I clean the, the restrooms, I know they're clean. But after you get them done, man, they smell wonderful. And he kept dogging me. He never asked, but he was kind of like waiting for this is what I do, Chuck. And I, and I said, oh, well, thanks, Chuck. And I just walk off. And man, he would get frustrated. I, could just, I was just toying or just playing with him. But that was my secret. Again, another thing that I've never said to anybody in my life, you're privileged this morning. And so like I said, I'd spray those kickboards, and man, it just smelled great. And I loved it. I, I was just having a great time in the Lord is all I was doing. Man, Lord, you're so good. I mean, the Lord saved me. And I couldn't help but come and serve. I had to serve. It's the only thing I could do. And God was so good to me. So let's let our good works glorify our Father in heaven. That's what Jesus was saying. Hey, you guys, you're following me? This is what you need to do. Oh, sure, I've healed and I've... I've fed and I've done this, that, and the other thing. But you know what you need to do now? You need to put your nose to the grindstone and draw attention to your heavenly Father. That's what you need to do. That's what Jesus is speaking to the multitudes. He's speaking to them, and they're getting it. So we are salt, we are light, and thirdly, we now recognize that Christ fulfills the law. Jesus Christ fulfills the law. So we don't need Jesus plus, or I took Jesus to get my palm read. Oh, I, I sat with Jesus and read the astrology predictions. No, that, that's not what's going on here. Uh-uh. Jesus Christ fulfills the law and Jesus speaking here in verse 17 he is drawing attention to him, himself saying hey do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets the law well the ten commandments right very familiar Exodus 20 Deuteronomy 5 we get it the ten commandments so Jesus said hey don't think that I came to destroy the law of Moses, the law of God, works either way, but the Ten Commandments. Don't think that I, I came to put away the Ten Commandments. I did not come to destroy, but I came to fulfill. Now in the women's ministry, as you know, ladies, that you're participating in the Women of the Word ministry on Monday and Tuesday, Monday night and, and Tuesday morning, you understand and you're being taught and reminded and the teaching has been, the theme teaching has been basically that the law, as you're studying the life of Paul, the ladies' ministry, the law was a vehicle to bring us to the cross. The law is very important. The law is like that Uber car, right? Hey, I need a ride. Okay, great. I'll be right there. And so that Uber car that you call comes and picks you up, and the Uber driver asks, where do you want to go? And so you say, well, I want to go to the foot of the cross. Great. Let's take off. That's the function of the law. The law is a vehicle, Paul tells us. The law is a vehicle to deliver us to the cross. That's what the law is for. So Jesus is saying, hey, don't think that I'm coming here to wipe the law out. No, the law is huge. And it's always going to be huge. Because the law brings us to the cross. Why do we end up at the cross? Because we try 
to fulfill righteousness through the law and we fail. Every single time. And that's what Paul is revealing about his own life. Say, hey man, on the outside you used to look at me and I was shown as perfect. Paul was saying that. Oh, man, when you looked at me, and, and people backed that up. So, oh, yeah, that Paul, he's the Pharisee of Pharisees, man. He's the Hebrew of Hebrews. Oh, there's nobody better than Paul. And Paul admitted that was my outside facade. Because by the time Paul really began to study the Tenth Commandment, I sh thou shall not covet, man, that pierced Paul right in the heart. Because I believe, and again, this is my opinion, but I believe when Paul read that, he realized, he said, you know what? I covet position. I believe Paul said, you know what, Lord? I covet power. By his activities, I think we can make a decent case for that. But I think when Paul really sat down and looked at that 10th commandment, he just said, Lord, I'm busted. It doesn't matter how many laws you break, if you will. You break one, you're done. And Paul knew that. I lust after power. I lust after position. And yet nobody could see that. He was, oh, he's just an ambitious young man. Oh, isn't he so smart? Oh, isn't he so dedicated? Paul used that as a covering for his lust for position. That's my opinion. And he knew that no one else saw that, not a human being saw that, except the Lord saw that. He saw it in spirit and truth. <laughs> That's when Paul realized, I'm toast. I'm done. That was one of my mixed up realities when I was a kid at 13 years old. The Lord said, I'm going to use you in ministry. And then I just thought to myself, wait a minute, Lord, you know me, I'm a mess. And I was so just twisted mentally, a lot of, just a lot of nonsense, a lot. And I said, I said in my heart to the Lord, I said, how would you be able to use a person like me? You must not know who I am. You must not be omniscient. That's what I told the Lord. You, you must not be all-knowing. You'd never take me. I mean, I'm just glad just to be, so, I think I'm saved, I think. But for you to tell me you're going to use me in the ministry, oh, you know, you don't know anything. Because I was so screwed up. And I took a 20-year sabbatical <laughs> and tried to prove to the Lord that he couldn't use me. Oh, not a good choice. Not a good choice. But Jesus, hey, Jesus saying, I didn't come to destroy the law. I didn't even come to destroy the, the, the speaking and the writings of the prophets. Oh, no, contraire. I'm here to fulfill these things. And we're going to celebrate that reality come Passion Week. Jesus is love. And he ended up on that cross, didn't he? And we're going to review that as the days come. But I did not come to destroy, I came to fulfill. I came to fulfill. For assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till it is all fulfilled. Now a jot or a tittle would be a reference to maybe dotting the I and crossing the T in our understanding. In the Hebrew language, a jot and a tittle were just little pen strokes, just like that, that dot on the eye. Or just that little pen stroke, just whoop, across the T. And Jesus is saying, hey, now one dotting of the eye or one crossing of the T will pass. I will fill, fulfill everything, absolutely everything. And that's the reality of Jesus fulfilling the law. Where whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments, whoever ignores that dotting of the I, 
Whoever ignores the crossing of the T. Whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and secondly teaches men to do so, they shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoever does and teaches these previous things, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Can I let you in on a little secret? that I pray for you on a daily basis, I pray that each and every one of you are great in heaven. I pray for each and every one of you every single day that, Lord, let your children be the best that you want them to be. That's our little secret, so don't tell anybody, okay? That's my prayer for this body. Lord, I pray that you allow this congregation to be exactly what it is that you want. Because whatever you want, Lord, is always best every single time. God's best is what I desire. So whoever teaches people to break these commandments, you'll be the least. And we've got to be a little careful with this because someone might become comfortable and say, well, I, I don't mind being least. Well, before too long, Jesus is going to be continuing teaching in this theme, saying there'll be many that come in Matthew chapter 7, many that come that say, oh, Lord, we did this and we did that in your name. And Jesus is explaining, saying, you know what? When those folks come, I'm going to say, be gone. I never knew you. So don't become comfortable. Well, I'll just, you know, I'll kind of fudge a little bit and it'll be all right. And then I'll have some other people engage with me because, you know, being least in heaven is not so bad. But at least I'm in heaven. You may not even make it there. It, when that's your attitude, well, I want to fulfill myself here on earth and I'll let eternity work its way out. Man, you are on thin ice. Thin ice. And can you imagine? I mean, we've got, and, and we'll look at that in chapter 7, but hey, depart from me. Wow. Depart from me. This is serious business. This is Jesus' words. It's not a game. It's not something we kind of roll the dice. It's not something we're casual about. Man. And we're understanding that. We thank God for that. Thank, we're thanking God that he's healing our minds. That's what he's doing for us because he loves us. He's healing our minds. He's speaking to us. God the Holy Spirit is leading us. God the Father is being glorified. So we only want the best. We don't want to dabble in, well, it's just, you know, you know, God knows my heart. Yeah, that's the problem. He does know your heart, Jeremiah 17 tells us. And we find in Jeremiah 17 that the heart is wicked. So don't think that, well, I'll just kind of fudge on this and, you know, I'll live with my girlfriend, you know, but I'll read scripture to her and stuff. And that'll be all right. <laughs> well, Lord, you know, I you know, shacked up with this gal and I read her scripture and Jesus is going to say, I don't know you, man. Go away. <laughs> wow. I mean, and fill in the blanks. <laughs> God help us. Now's the time to get serious. I mean, we're serious, but, you know, it's just a reminder. Fortify your posture for I say to you Jesus concludes this morning for us for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven so Jesus is saying hey if you don't want me to fulfill the law then you've got to be better than Paul the Apostle prior to his conversion. He was it. He was the talk of the town. But Jesus is saying, no, but you've got to be better than him. And so we would say, well, there's no way. And Jesus would respond, that's correct. There is no way. 
Paul didn't even get saved. I had to knock him to the ground on his way to Damascus. So even if you excelled or exceeded Paul's lifestyle, you still wouldn't make it. Paul wasn't going to make it. He wasn't going to make it. He thought he was going to make it, but no, he wasn't going to make it. So therefore, even when you exceed Paul's posture, you, ain't, you still ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it. And Jesus is saying, I've, I, Jesus' words, I fulfill the law. Me. Only. I'm the perfect Savior. And because I'm perfect, nothing needs to be added. I am perfect. Jesus speaking. As we celebrate communion this morning, I'll ask the worship team to come join me. How appropriate it is this morning as we are reminded of what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. Jesus, in fact, I should say more poignantly, God the Holy Spirit has used the law as a vehicle to deliver us to the foot of the cross. And as we stood in our unrepented condition at the time, we looked at the cross and we realized as it towered over us, as we stood at the foot and saw that rugged, ugly cross, blood-stained, chipped, dented, marked up, as we sat there and looked at that for a moment, we realized, Jesus, I need you to save me. And at that moment, when we said that in our heart, Jesus said, I will save you right now. But when we get to the foot of the cross, we have to take that moment and receive. Amen? And so those of us that are born again, and I believe it's the majority of us here in this room, I don't have any problem whatsoever. But if you're born again this morning, come up as... The ushers will guide and, and lead. They're great traffic cops. They haven't quite gotten to the point of writing tickets, but I'm very careful if I momentarily just park in front of the door in the red zone. I'm kind of looking around, see if they'll tow my car. But nonetheless, they're going to they're gonna lead us. These elements have been put together with loving kindness sanitized, prayed over, clean as it gets, because we take it seriously. So Sam leads us in some reflective music. Take the time to reflect. Take the time to thank your Savior and your Lord. Thank Him for the Passion Week coming up. Thank Him for His goodness, and most of all, thank God the Father for raising our Savior from the dead. He lives, and he is with us here today. So as we celebrate communion, come join us. Let's worship.
Find us in the river, Lord God. We are cracked and dried, but yet we know by you, God, Holy Spirit, torrents of living water flow from each and every one of us. Father God, we thank you so much for loving us that you sent. You loved us so much that you gave us the perfect Savior, and in him we find peace, confidence in Christ, boldness to walk, ability to proclaim the good news, the ability to be salt, the ability to be light, and the ability to proclaim Jesus as the one and only way, as the fulfillment of of your requirements, Lord God. We could not invent you, Lord God. We don't have the brain capacity to do so. We invent little idols that are deaf, dumb, and blind. Then, Lord, when we get tired of that, we elevate our own selves to God status, which once again we see in Genesis Chapter two, chapter three, when the serpent came and tempted Eve with the opportunity of saying, oh, you'll be like a little God. And not only Eve, but Adam fell for it. Lord, our only hope is in the finished work of your son, our savior, God the son, Jesus Christ. He is God, but yet we also find Jesus you speaking to us, to yours that were around you. And letting those that followed, those that were disciples of you, Lord God, as you 
got closer and closer to the cross, you made it evident to your disciples that you have become our brother. You're our Savior. You are God. Our knee will bow to you. But in the same sense, we are related, Lord God, through a spiritual bonding, Lord God. And so this morning as we take the bread, the elements, the bread and the cup, representations of your body and your blood, but we take these elements in proclaiming that Jesus, you are our Lord, and we are linked to you in this spiritual fashion as demonstrated by these physical elements. But Jesus, we thank you so much for loving us. We thank you, God, Holy Spirit, for pointing the way to Christ. We thank you, Father God, for giving us the common sense that doesn't seem to be so common in this world, but you gave us the common sense to receive your goodness, which is only found through the finished work of Christ. The triune God working together, we glorify you, and it is in Jesus' name we pray these things and say, Amen. Amen. Let's partake, shall we? Can we sing that verse one more time as we begin to close? that he gave he demonstrated his love by giving and we celebrate that this morning amen and so we've recognized this morning that we are salt we are light and we proclaim that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of God's law perfect amen I pray that you have a great week in the Lord this morning I pray this morning that God reveals himself to you as he has all week, but we start a fresh new week. And so let's be reminded to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. And let's not lean on our own understanding. This is a walk of faith. We don't walk by sight. So let's reject that and let's sit at the foot of Jesus Christ and listen even more than we ever have. Amen? He will reveal himself in a mighty way. He has and he'll continue to do so. Rejoice in that reality. Join us by standing. And let's go out praising the Lord, shall we? Trust in the Lord with all your not on your own understanding all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path Jesus lover of my soul
direct your plan. I hear that name. Jesus. Hey, praise the Lord, guys. What a wonderful day already, huh? Have a nice rest of the day, and hopefully we'll see you Wednesday night. Guys, don't forget Tuesday night. God bless you guys. Pastor Greg, Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. Hey, we're so glad that you've been enjoying the videos, and we just know that God has been touching you and just giving you a blessing through these teachings. But you know, we'd like to give you a challenge. Since this material is available, as you know, you can go to the website and pull these videos down, but we would like to challenge you. Since you're enjoying these teachings on a regular basis, we want to challenge you, why not share these videos. You've got lots of friends on Facebook and so forth and social media. Why not inject the gospel message, the Bible teachings of, of the Lord into, into your share partners? It would be a great opportunity to maybe start a conversation, but we would really like you to be encouraged and consider passing these teachings on. We want people to be benefited, so let's allow the Lord to do what he would like to do. But in the meantime, we're so glad that you've been join, joining us and enjoying these teachings. They will continue to come as the Lord tarries. But again, enjoy, enjoy the Lord. Thank you so much, and continue to pray for Calvary Chapel here in the city of Harupa Valley. God bless you, Pastor Greg, once again, and we'll catch up with you next time. Have a great week in the Lord. Bye now.